Good morning. It's Jim, Deb, and Kevin at 95.5 WFMS Thursday. Yeah. Here we are. So what was it? Uh, Chuck likes to say pre-Friday. Pre-Friday. It's pre-Friday, like too. Yes. And it's a little cool. Did you notice it on the way in here? Well, it is uh, I, November. I didn't notice because I, I didn't have my windows down. Oh. Um, you mean walking in? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I think it's been cool all week. It's 30. Woo-hoo. Woo! It's not warming up. 95.5 WFMS. Jordan Davis, next thing you know, 95.5 WFMS. Good morning. Deb, you'll be happy to hear that today is National Men Make Dinner Day. I heard that. Uh, so uh, you can just... Uh, Which means I'm getting a pizza. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he makes good pizza? Well, uh, anytime it's his night, he just is like uh, Arnie's. You know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, get out there on the grill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we put it on Facebook, and uh, Erica says, that's every night for me. So evidently her husband that's does that. Oh, good. Erica's on. lucky. Uh, Thomas says, guess I'm cooking on the grill again. Uh-huh. It's never too cold to grill out. Jim, what would never. you be? You know, uh, well, in the wintertime, I'd really like to make my, it takes a while, but the country-style ribs, uh, with a nice, nice barbecue sauce, maybe some uh, scalloped potatoes mm. and well, asparagus. It's men make dinner night, so are you going to whip That's, that up? Yeah, it's more of a Sunday. Now, during the week, oh. we're going out in the grill. Oh, okay, we're going on the burgers. Okay, and we're going with you know what the suddenly salad, which I know it sounds yeah. easy. It is easy. It's really good though too. Like a side salad? Well, it's a, it's a pasta salad. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And you yeah. put a little packet yeah, over yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but you need like eight of those. <laughs> they are kind of <laughs> they small. Do, they only make a small <laughs> serving. Yeah, that's good. How about you, Kevin? Um, you know, I I like chicken on the grill, but in the weather like this tonight, it might not be perfect for grilling out. Um, so Did, yeah, I like I've got a three out. ingredient dinner you can make. Uh, oh, Biscuits oh, do you? And gravy. Biscuits oh, gravy. that's a perfect Biscuits, for the men to make. Sausage, milk, done. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, and it's a comfort food. Now you have to like somehow this. cook that. You can't just put it on the table. Here's biscuit, sausage, <laughs> and milk. <laughs> I'll there show you. Yeah. <laughs> and milk. And yeah. There you go. Anyways, right, so. make uh, guys make dinner uh, tonight. Dave. Get busy. Yeah. Sounds good. Ninety-five five WFMS. Good morning. Six twenty-five. Jim, Deb, and Kevin. Yesterday evening, the alerts on my phone went off, and it uh, mm-hmm. found out that uh, Bobby Knight. Coach Knight passed away at the age of 83. In Bloomington. Uh, yeah. yeah, so um, kind of sad. Uh, yeah, it's an institution uh, in uh, in Indiana for yeah. basketball. Yeah, and whether you were an IU fan, I was growing up, or mm-hmm. maybe a Purdue fan, you had to respect what he did. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the the championships, coaching uh, the USA team. Uh, I think uh, Steve Alford had a book out called My Five Seasons with Bob Knight. Right. Talking about his four at IU and then one playing for uh, the USA team. Mm-hmm. But uh, the governor has, has released a statement, which I thought was pretty interesting. Yep. The statement reads as follows. Coach Robert Montgomery Knight was a towering basketball mm-hmm. figure and fighter second to none. As a national champion, he became synonymous with our state and what Hoosiers are all about. Hard work, practice makes perfect, teamwork, and a commitment to excellence. His teams were built around student athletes, and his influence prepared them for life after the ball stopped bouncing. Mm-hmm. There will never be another Coach Knight, and the banners that hang in Assembly Hall will forever remind us of his time, his impact, and dominance. When Indiana builds our Mount Rushmore of basketball, the general will surely be on it. And you said you, you grew up. Your dad was a huge, oh, huge Bob Knight fan. Bob Knight fan. And you've got a son down there at IU right now. I do, yeah. I wonder what uh, what they're going to be doing on campus today. Yeah, he texts me immediately. Yeah. And oh, yeah. then, of course, I have a, a really good friend who's a Bob Knight fan. And, and so, of course, I think everybody was just sharing the news. Yeah. And it is a little bit of a sadness there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the end of a legend there, you know, mm-hmm. comes to it, so... I was a Purdue fan, so but I love I love the G, the Gene Cady uh, uh, Bob Knight days when they would both be on the court together. Yeah, and that was fun too. So I wonder what ever happened to that chair that he threw. Boy, that'd, that'd be, be in a museum somebody, somewhere, wouldn't it? wouldn't it? I'm not asking. All right, <laughs> 83 years old Bob Knight passing. 6:27. Uh, Drew Baldridge uh, sings. Uh, She's somebody's daughter. He'll be at eight seconds saloon tomorrow night, but he joins us in 11 minutes. 95.5 WFMS. Good morning. You're with Jim, Deb, and Kevin. Of course, the WFMS Bush Light Series continues tomorrow at 8 Second Saloon. It does. Got special guest Drew Baldridge, and we had a chance to talk with him. Hey, Jim. It's Drew. Drew Baldridge, hey, how Drew. are you? Good. How are y'all doing? Good. Th- thanks for taking time to call us. Of course. Thanks for taking time to want to chat with me. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Where are you calling from right now? I'm just actually in Nashville here. We're about to uh, hit the road this weekend and play in Maryland. We're going to come see y'all, and then we're going to go over to Illinois and play, too. So we got a full weekend of country music. So how do you keep this straight? You're in one city and one state after another. Do you get confused where you are sometimes? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do get confused. You know, it's it's a lot right now. We're talking with Drew Baldridge. You grew up on a farm, and I would imagine, you know, there are a lot of life lessons that you learn by uh, growing up on a farm along with that good work ethic. What sort of life lesson would you hope to pass down to your son? 
Oh man, you know we got a uh, got a song called Legacy, and uh, I put it on my last album. And I wrote it all about my grandpa who who passed away a couple of years ago, and it talks about growing up on the farm and all the things that he taught me. And you know, I I kind of wrote that song because I was having a hard time thinking about you know my son never knowing my grandpa mm-hmm. and never getting to meet him. So it, it got me thinking of like, you know what, he's gonna really learn a lot from my grandpa because my grandpa taught me so many things and so now i get to teach it on and legacy just keeps passing on and passing down and i think a lot of people always ask how does music and farming kind of go together well this life of music is a roller coaster ride i mean there's years that you're up there's years that you're down there's years that you're fighting just to stay working and that's how farming is you know we we weren't the biggest farm in the world and we had old tractors that broke down every harvest and, and it makes me think a lot about my touring van it breaks down all the time right. <laughs> we're out on the road and, <laughs> and it makes me think too of like hey you know some years you have really good yield and you have a bumper crop you know and you're up and you're living the high life and um, there's some years where, you know, just like, you know, in 2019, I lost everything. I lost my record deal. I lost my publishing deal. I lost my management. I lost my booking agent. Everybody just kind of wow. gave up on what I was doing. And, and it was like, okay, I can quit or I can keep working hard, you know, and hope that that bumper year comes back. You just keep working hard in this business and, you know, the fruits of your labor will eventually come out. That's and, and that's what we've been very for over the last couple of years. You know, having some success with songs like She's Somebody's Daughter and, and She Have This Dance. And people really started reacting to that music. And, and, you know, you just kind of prepare yourself now for those years where you're like, okay, I've been through those low years. I know they're going to happen again. I just got to, you know, prepare for that mentally. And, and uh, yeah, so it's kind of similar to farming. I know that sounds kind of crazy, but in a weird no. way, it's not. What a great out, out, yeah. uh, overview of everything. Yeah, I too. love that. Drew Baldridge, who we're talking there as well. Can we mention the. Yeah, uh, your the song? son is that all yeah, right? The, I, I don't know if that was his personal. wedding. It's, it was the mother son uh, dance, and we picked out the, his song. Uh, Can she have this dance? Mm-hmm. Because it talks about he's dancing with his new bride, and then the, he says, "Can I? Can she have this dance?" He's talking about his mom. Yeah, I, I get welled up every. I don't know what it is. I can't yeah. listen to the whole song anymore. Yeah. Oh wow, <laughs> it's that powerful. It's just a great song, and he's just real. Uh, I think you're gonna enjoy the show tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. he's a real sentimental guy. Yeah. yeah, so close to his grandfather that his wife surprised him on his wedding day. Uh, had a note sent over to him and said, open up your jacket. And she had taken clothing from his grandfather and had it stitched inside Didn't his you, tuxedo. Is that cool or what? How cool yeah. is that? Really and is. She, he said it It got him. He yeah. was bawling. <laughs> That's tomorrow night yep. at the 8 Second Saloon. 641, win Cody Johnson tickets in one hour from right now. Oh, that's the the band Parmalee, where the lead singer does not lock the bathroom door. Yeah. I walked in on him in Nashville. Mm-hmm. It was highly embarrassing. Mm-hmm. 95.5 WFMS. <laughs> You're listening to Jim, Dev, and Kevin. We mentioned uh, tipping yesterday at this time. We're talking about uh, should you tip, well, how much oh, you tip, and all that. Yeah. Well, now it continues, and Deb mentioned we just opened up a can of worms. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you saw this, but uh, yesterday DoorDash started adding a pop-up disclaimer. If you order DoorDash and don't have a tip, it pops up. Your order with no tip might take longer to get delivered. Are you sure you want to continue? Uh, so they're they're just openly admitting, look, those who are those dashers as they call them, uh, might not be as quick to take your order well, if there's no tip. Now they're getting paid, and I know we have a lot of door dashers sure. dashers that are listening to us right now that do that. But work. they're gonna grab the ones that have the higher tips. I mean, it kind of stands to reason. Stands wouldn't to you? reason, yeah. But I will say this, I always tip for DoorDash. I would never not tip for DoorDash because when you're uh, transporting my food, mm-hmm. I don't want you to I spit want in it. Care. <laughs> With spe- I want special care. Yeah. I want <laughs> the bag to remain closed. <laughs> right. I know several door dashers and or dashers, and I don't think they would do that. I know, so I'm no, just saying okay. there's a chance. Yeah. Right, just that thought of it. Yeah. Yes. Nothing else. There's there. a risk. Well, right. there's a risk they could do it anyway. Okay, whether you tip well, or don't tip, I true. guess. You just feel better about it. But anyway, yeah. I think it's interesting. They've come out right out in the open and said, hey, look, you're not tipping. It may not get there as quick as you yeah. thought. You want it a little faster? Yeah. Tip higher but or tip at all. But there's no guarantee that would be even faster okay. to me. Well, I, mean, I know someone that door dashed, and they, they tended to uh, grab... The, in fact, they would go and wait outside the restaurant. Okay, it was my son. Uh, they would go and wait outside the restaurant and wait for... At this one restaurant, they always had higher tips from a couple families. and They'd wait for that one family? They, three times a week, $10 tips. So there you go. I bet he got it right over there quickly. Wait, I'm it. sure. I'm well, waiting for the Smiths. <laughs> Meanwhile, Kevin's Smith over Smith here with no tip. Yeah. yeah. And you're not getting picked up. Yeah. No, I'm going to get my right. own. If I'm going to tip anybody, it's going to be me. Right. I'm tipping myself. I always so. tip. Though. And you know, that's when you're tipping in advance, what you do. I had a buddy who was a bartender, uh-huh. and he told me this when you first sit down to have a drink at the bar and you pay for that first round, pay a really big tip. 
right there. And then, because they'll remember that and they'll come back quicker for you. I've shared that with my friends. I call it the Jim Denny method. Oh, yeah? Because yeah, yeah. they're like, we can't get, they won't even take our order. Limit. It's been 20 minutes. So I'm like, do what Jim does. So you tip early. Yes. Mm-hmm. More. And then, and then you get back. better service. Oh, okay. They come so back. I guess it'd be like DoorDash taking into that, you know. So they see, oh, this is a nice tip here. I'm going to make sure this is good. <laughs> be quality. like Deb's and just yeah. waiting yeah. for you. He, to, yeah. he literally I'm, parks I'm outside, outside the your Thai house. restaurant. Yeah, <laughs> I'm outside the restaurant. I know you're going to call it in. I'm ready to go. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm right. ready. For <laughs> little tips on tipping. That's right. <laughs> 714 at Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey uh, were home on Halloween but didn't answer the door and passed out candy. Uh, Deb's got the details in Deb's Daily Dirt coming up in 13 minutes. 95.5 WFMS. Good morning with Jim, Deb, and Kevin. Deb's got your daily dirt, and she was rushed to the hospital. Yes, it was very serious, and we'll tell you who we're talking about coming up in the next oh, 30 seconds or so. Now, she didn't do a book tour, but Britney Spears' memoir has sold 1.1 no million way. copies a million in copies? its first week. Wow. wow. She, and, you know, John Stamos did the book the book tour. They came out the same day. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, she shot to the top. Wow. Um, so which one will you buy, John Stamos or Britney's book? Actually, I would like to read both, but my sister just finished the Britney Spears book. She said it was a great read, so she said, don't buy it, just borrow mine. Okay. So, there you go. <laughs> so I'm going to do that. Now, I would probably need to buy the John Stamos because of the, you know, photos. Okay. Oh, it's a picture book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe so. Uh, so Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey were Halloween Grinches this year. They dressed up. They appeared from photos inside, they appeared to be inside Travis in his uh, Kansas City home. It was taped off, though. Trick-or-treaters did try to go to the front door. I mean, wouldn't you? Taylor sure. Swift is inside. Yeah, Wouldn't you right. want her handing you candy? Um, but a security guard was outside telling the trick or treaters well, that no, no one fun. was home. I know, but at the same time, they, they still also, got candy. And I don't know. Did, did they? A security guard out there? I would think he'd be handed out the candy. Well, maybe right? he handed well, he out should. the candy. You're right, You're right, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they, they're mansion. allowed some privacy. Do you have your security guard hand out candy at your mansion? <laughs> yeah, it's right there at the front gate, <laughs> which right. is the front door, which is right into the hall. <laughs> And he's the guard. (laughs) (laughs) So early tests indicate Matthew Perry did not have fentanyl or meth in his system. He did not. Hmm. Uh, Meanwhile, the woman he had dinner with the day before he died said he was in extremely good spirits and very happy and vibrant. And that's uh, Mm. even more sad to hear that things were going well for him. Also, Brooke Shields suffered a grand mal seizure recently. Oh, no. Um, And that's the really serious kind where you turn blue. She said, I was trying to swallow her own tongue. She was frothing at the mouth. Bradley Cooper... An actor was nearby and uh, jumped into action and rode with her to the hospital so she could get treated. But that's really scary. No right. kidding. Wow. You know, I got to do an interview with her a number of years ago, mm-hmm. and it was early in the morning, and they announced no pictures because she doesn't have her makeup on. Mm-hmm. She was actually stunning without. I mean, it's yeah. like you don't sure. need makeup at on at all. But could, so I don't have a photo of it because she didn't have any makeup on. But. So how do we know it even happened? You have to just, you believe have to just trust my word. <laughs> trust me, Deb. It really did. It did like happen. I said, how yeah. do we know it even happened? <laughs> it, it happened. It it's happened. 728. That's Deb's Daily Dirt. It's sponsored by Mark Deedle Realty. All right. So what did uh, Cody Johnson do before becoming a big country star? Mm-hmm. You will be surprised to hear this. <laughs> He's going to tell us in 12 minutes. Those are vibes. Huh? Vibes. Vibes. Yeah, they're, they're, they're. Those little things. That's yeah. what that's called? Those are called vibes? Yeah, it's kind of like, uh, what's it called? It's, um, it's got another name, too, for it. But like vibes. a xylophone. <laughs> well, yeah, kind of. That's right. Yeah. That's an elementary school <laughs> yeah. name of it. Yeah. Yeah, the, I like to try to hear a song and pick out the, 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 the instruments, instruments being played. Uh, uh, WFMS, good morning, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got uh, Cody Johnson coming to town. Yeah, yeah uh, tickets go on sale tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Of course, he's up for Male Vocalist of the Year next week at the he's CMA. He's got some pipes, too. Mm-hmm. He yes, he does. great voice. And, you know, he's been in music a while, but he told us about you won't believe this. something he did before he got in music. I was working uh, at the prison system in Texas. I was a prison guard. And, so you're in uh, prison. Yeah, I did. I actually turned 21 in prison. <laughs> I just wasn't doing life without parole. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, uh, that's I'm, a totally different job. It is a totally different perspective on the song. <laughs> wow. yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Still very much mama tried. But, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, I was trying to ride bulls and uh, trying to go to college, and, you know, it's funny how God works. It's just mm-hmm. music always seemed to be in the forefront. Supposed and, to be. Uh, here we are. Yeah, it's, it's, say, it's, just, it's meant to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He turned 21 in prison, new life without parole. <laughs> I don't see him oh, as a judge. prison guard. Oh, I do. I, I'm, d- yeah. yeah. I, I do. I that. mean, when you see him, he's always very tailored in his clothing. You're right. And, You're right. And like his starchy uh, Wrangler jeans. Yeah. He's a Texas boy, yeah, and yeah. I think that he, he could be really strict. He's got that, uh, that, that George Strait kind of a look to him. Mm-hmm. With the hat and the, and the crease in the shirt yeah. and the jeans and, and all Which too. gives the impression that he doesn't mess around. Yeah. Yeah. Probably so. Don't mess with Texas, right? Isn't that what they say? Well, you can mess with Cody Johnson on 
a specific date. It's March 15th. Gainbridge Field has Kevin mentioned that tickets go on sale tomorrow. Mm -hmm. That's at LiveNation.com. Or you could win those tickets right now if you're caller six. Go see Cody Johnson. 317-255-9367. 317-255-9367. Good luck. All right, 741. Uh, and uh, Jim or Deb, get ready because Kelly is standing by. 805, we play Can't Beat Deb. It's time for another round of Can't Be Deb, and our contestant on the line with us here is Kelly. Good morning, Kelly. Good morning. What side town are you from? I'm from Plainfield. Plainfield, all right. Well, here's how we play. Kelly, we're going to ask you five questions. We, of course, asked Deb the exact same five questions. Kelly, if you get more right than Deb, then, of course, you win. But if she gets more right than you or if she ties you, then she wins. And if you're ready, let's start with question number one. Okay, here we go, Kelly. Question one, here is a list you don't want to be on. For the ninth year in a row, Chicago was voted the number one city for rats, bats, or spiders. Oh, uh, rats. I just heard this. Question two. It's a fact. Pet owners spend a lot of money on their pets. But who spends more on their pets, dog owners or cat owners? Um, dog owners. Question three. Another sign that you're getting older, if you dance with your hands in the air, Gen Z thinks you're ancient. Mm -hmm. What kind of dance are you doing if you do a ball change move? Is it tap, jazz, or ballet? A ball change is jazz. Okay, question four. Deodorant sales are booming again because more people are back in the office. Now, what deodorant uses the tagline, strong enough for a man, but made for a woman? What deodorant? Uh, degree. Okay, question <laughs> five. <don't> <laughs> a majority of Americans consider themselves to be spenders and not savers. Now, in an average week, do more of a shop online or shop in a store? Online. All right. There's our five questions. Let's bring Deb back in the room. See how she does at 95.5 WFMS. It's back to Can't Beat Deb. Deb's back into the studio. Let's say hello from Plainfield, the one and only Kelly. Hi, Kelly. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. All right. Deb, are you ready? Oh, sure. Let's see how you do here. Question one. Here is a list you don't want to be on. For the ninth year in a row, Chicago was voted the number one city for rats, bats, or spiders. Chicago? Chicago. I'm going to go with rats. Yeah, you'd be right. Ugh. And Kelly knew that, too. So everybody scores. It's Deb 1, Kelly 1. Question 2. It's a fact. Pet owners spend a lot of money on their pets. Now, who spends more on their pet? Is it dog owners or cat owners? Mm. This could be an either or. It could be a 50-50. So I'm going to say, you know, dogs are not as self-sufficient. So go with dogs. You'd be right. Okay. Kelly was, too, so she gets the point as well. So it's Deb, two, Kelly, two. Good game going. All right, question three. Another sign that you're getting older. If you dance with your hands in the air, Gen Z thinks you're ancient. Oh, geez. Now, what kind of dance are you doing if you do a ball change move? Is it a tap, jazz, or ballet? Uh, let's see. I did ballet. Um, it's a step ball change is tap. Tap. That's correct. It's also jazz. I found that out because that's what Kelly said. And I looked it up, and she's oh. she's right, too. So uh, that would be correct. It's tap and jazz, sure. and everybody scores Ooh. then. So it's Deb 3, Kelly 3. All right, question four, Deb. Deodorant sales are booming again because more people are back in the office. Now, what deodorant uses the tagline, strong enough for a man, but made for a woman? That's, uh... Oh, gosh. Okay, this is okay. I know this. So well, secret, then tell us. secret is, oh, so hang on, that's not my guess, yeah. but I'm just got to walk myself through here. Oh, so okay. secret, <laughs> secret's for women. What's strong enough for a man but made for a woman? Woman. That would be, <laughs> is that sure? Is it sure? I'm not sure, but I'm going to go with sure. Ah, shoot! It's secret. You oh, said it. Oh, no! <laughs> uh, but Kelly guessed degree, which isn't right either. So oh, it is made scores. for a woman. So I just, oh, shoot. You make things so hard I sometimes, got, so, Deb. So the score <laughs> remains the same. Deb three, <laughs> Kelly three. We're going to the final question, Here all tied. All right, question five, Deb. A majority of Americans consider themselves to be spenders, not savers. Now, in an average week, do more of a shop online or shop in a store? Uh, I would say now in 2023, more of a shop online. Are you kidding me? That is incorrect. Gosh. Kelly also guessed online. But no, they're still, in an average week, people are typically more likely to shop in a store. Dumb question. So, nope. Well, it's a question. It's a <laughs> Nobody scores. It remains the same. 
Oh, Kelly, it's uh, it's tied. It's Deb three, Kelly three. Despite playing a pretty good game, Kelly, by tying it means all ties go to Deb. Hard. <laughs> I'm sorry, you don't have what it takes to beat Deb. At least not today. Not today. But th- oh, okay. Thank you. All right. Well, it's time for those famous words. This is Kelly from Plainfield, and I can't beat. Yeah. But a great run <laughs> at a tie there. If you'd like to be a contestant, just uh, text us, 317-255-9367. We'll get you all signed up for Can't Beat Deb. 95.5 WFMS. Good morning, Jim, Deb, and Kevin. We uh, News came down last night about Bob Knight passing. Yeah, it was kind of obviously sad. Uh, my phone went off. The alert went off, and, uh, and that's when I, how I found out. I grew up as a as an IU fan, yeah. Bobby Knight fan. I know, Deb, you said your family my was... Uh, father was a huge yeah, fan. Jim was more of a Purdue fan. Right, right. But when you'd have uh, Coach Knight and Coach Katie on, uh, going up against each other, both of them legendary yes. yeah. when it came to uh, to coaching. So yeah. that was always fun to watch. Uh, he, of course, passed away yesterday, age of 83. Uh, you can make contributions to the Alzheimer's Association or to Marion University, which... I thought it was a little odd. I didn't get Why the, would they be Marion University? Well, I looked it up. And then Deb, being the investigative reporter that she is, found this out. It says, uh, it, obviously, private Catholic university located here in India. And it's the and place. Jim's alma mater. Mm-hmm. Yep. And it's the place where Bob Knight served as a consultant for the men's basketball team in his later years. So they're asking if you're interested in making a memorial contribution to Marion. In honor of Bob Knight, you can visit their official athletics website. Mm-hmm. And we also shared with you earlier a really lengthy statement from Indiana Governor Eric Holcomb on Bob Knight. We won't uh, share all of it, but he does end it with... Uh, saying that there will never be another coach night, and the banners that hang in Assembly Hall will forever remind us of his time, his impact, and dominance. And when Indiana builds our Mount Rushmore of basketball, the general will surely be on. It's from oh, the, clearly. the governor there, huh? Yeah. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. from the governor. Mm-hmm. Well, it's uh, it was a pretty good run there. But you know what? I, can I say this? What's that? It makes sense now about the uh, Marion University. Why? Because they're the Marion Knights. Jim has been saying this off air for about well, six and I'm thinking, minutes. Maybe that's why, you and, know. And he hoping that get, we would laugh. He at didn't it. get much of a reaction from us. Well, so if, I guess when a, the Marian, when a, when the a the joke Knights, is bad, you just repeat it. The Marion well, Bob Knights. Well, it's saying. like if it were the Marion Denny's, mm, okay. I would probably contribute. Why don't right. you just take twenty six? What you need to know before you toss out that old jack o' lantern? It's coming up in twelve minutes. Jim told us this. Yeah. 8.37 with Jim, Deb, and Kevin on a uh, Thursday, as Chuck Lofton likes to call it, pre-Friday. Pre-Friday. Yeah. Pre-Friday. Well, here it is. It's November the 2nd. It comes, Halloween is over. We're starting to... I see some people transitioning now is what they're going. They're going from that fall, the the, the straw, the pumpkins, and they're kind of they're clearing it out to make room soon for the Thanksgiving and then the Christmas decorations. Oh, yeah. sure. But there's not much difference in... Halloween and Thanksgiving decorations. I mean, Minus good. the pumpkin. Right. Carved right. pumpkin. Well, I think but so. r- real pumpkins. Would be my fine. witch has got to go away. Well, yeah, that that goes away, but Ghosts. you know, the other stuff can be kind of it's fallish. Right. I yes. I heard this and uh, you looked it up, make sure it was true. I thought you were full mm. of it, Jim. I said, You're making this up. <laughs> Cut up your pumpkins. Not the jack o' lanterns that have already been gutted and they're about ready to fall apart. Carve you, them up? You, yeah, carve them up. Your old pumpkins. Your old pumpkins into smaller slices. Like whole pumpkins mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. are on your porch. Right. Carve them up into smaller pieces and then take them out to the woods <clears throat> and leave them there because it feeds the, the deer will eat those, uh, and especially deer this time of year it's when they're looking deer, for food. deer, possums, and raccoons. raccoons. I said, why cut it up? Just throw it out there. They're not, and it, they're not picky. They'll eat whatever, well, but, it, but the article I read said... Well, you got to give them a running start. <laughs> have fun. Hope your teeth are sharpened. <laughs> that was it. Yeah. Right, right. Now, squirrels have no problem with that, trying to go through that. But if it's in smaller pieces, yeah. it's easier for them to eat it. Well, should we just hand them. feed them, too? I mean, come on. <laughs> they'll, they'll, brown cutty, they'll walk right up to you. <laughs> Deb said, I'm not doing this because... Well, because we've got woods right behind our backyard, and, and all of a sudden, uh, you're going to bring out coyotes. Yeah. And Bella goes out there to... To I don't know relieve herself. Coyotes are big uh, pumpkin eaters. I, I think, think when they're you're more look- meat. I've seen some skinny coyotes. When you're right. looking for food, don't you want anything? The pumpkins, I don't, I don't, I don't know. think they discriminate. Right, but uh, you know, deer will eat that. Yeah. yeah. So you'll be feeding the deer, which in turn will draw the coyotes. Which now you really get right into the. <laughs> and now Bella has to pee in the front yard. <laughs> Circle of life. <laughs> anyway, just just keep well, that in mind. Well, thank you for that bit of knowledge. Yeah. I did not know that. <laughs> I was just going to throw my full pumpkin in the woods, but I need to. Evidently cut it cut up it for up. the <laughs> picky deer. If you could display it on a platter, they love that. If you could heat it up, too. A little warm pumpkin. I am not, my friends that are deer hunters are rolling their eyes right now. <laughs>